if somebody wants to sit. I'll be here about 10 minutes, maybe 15. They're in no particular order of importance. Um, fire is important if you're cold, you know, and you need to cook something, but if you're wandering, you know, fire is not that important in that moment, so everything it has its has its function and its form and its uh, its uh, application. Again, these are in no particular order. I taught skills, uh, tracking, uh, native awareness, um, ecology, uh, when we walk, huh? to, to a bunch of, a great bunch of high school, public high school kids right over here in Highland, New York at the next town over from New Pulse. And their, their initial, other with with a only a couple of exceptions, their knowledge of, of nature was, you know, road, trees. <laughs> that was it, road, trees, okay? And they went from that uh, level, uh, I had them for a couple of years, but uh, this, this story was had to do with about four months worth of teaching. They went from that to this, um, uh, um, level of awareness in, in just a couple of months and to me that's remarkable because this is a this is a bowl that's been burned out and a spoon also that's been burned out and shaped and the reason why this is so important is if you were lost here or you were wandering and traveling with nothing but the clothes on your back how would you scoop up water and how would you gather water? How would you melt snow or how would you melt ice or purify water or make that bowl of pine needle tea that we were talking about? How would you do it? You need some kind of vessel. So I had the kids burn this cavity out uh, with hot coals. Of course they made a fire with a bow drill, some sort of primitive method. Uh, they didn't do this with a torch or a lighter. And then so you char out the cavity, um, shape it to the size and shape that you want. Then you take a stone, Scrape all the charcoal out. You got a nice serviceable bowl. Same what kind of wood is the bowl? Um, it's softwood. Softwood. Yeah. And, and um, you could do it with hardwood. Just takes a lot longer. Um, softwood is good. Um, same principle for spoons. I made these spoons. Um, here, this one is koa wood from Hawaii. I had the opportunity to uh, run some camps in Hawaii for a couple of years uh, for kids uh, right on the flanks of Mauna Loa. And this is koa wood, and I wanted to come back to New York and show off my koa wood spoon and, bowl. you know, hey, where's your koa wood bowl, you know? And I, I started on the spoon, I burnt out the, the, uh, the little cavity on the spoon, I started carving, and I was like, forget about koa, too hard, it took me too long. So I went back to using softwood. Um, so this is, Think of this in terms of size, small, medium, large, right? Spoon, bowl, canoe, right? Same principle. Okay. So, uh, so then my high school kids scooped up snow off the ground, grabbed some chopsticks or, or tongs, and grabbed some hot stones from the fire, put the snow or the ice in the bowl, took some hot stones. Two stones about this size would make a bowl of snow excuse me, a bowl of snow or ice like this boil in about five seconds. The first one would melt it, would liquefy it all. The second one, this bowl would be rapidly boiling right over the top. Put your pine needles in there, and I'm looking around at these high school kids that didn't know the difference between, you know, a sassafras and a red oak and a black birch and a shagbark hickory to this. I saw them drinking their pine needle tea right out of bowls that they made. So that was a great um, learning experience for them. I'm going to pass this stuff around, boys, right? Just kind of check it out if you want. Pass it around. Uh, these baskets are made from, I've had lots of these over the years. I give a lot of this stuff away, especially the real beautiful pieces. I give them away as gifts, especially to kids. And this is, these baskets are made from a tree called black ash. It's a tree that grows um, in wet, kind of swampy, rich, moist woodlands in this bioregion. And it's just interesting that if you take a black ash log and, and bash it with a sledgehammer or a, a round, heavy round river stone, 
it breaks off right along the ad, it splits along the annual growth rate. And you get these wonderful, they're called splints, that, that crack off of the log. And they're about four times thicker than this. And if you're using green wood, if you're using green wood, they're like a noodle. You could take them and bend them right into chairs and furniture and pack baskets. You could just put that stuff right down. Thank you, sir. Um, or you could take it and split it down to thinner and thinner pieces, and then you get to make these beautiful baskets. These beautiful baskets. Isn't that cool? But who thought of this stuff? <laughs> All those people that suffered in survival. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones that thought of this. Oh, don't get me started. Hey, can I send this one around this way too? I'll send that one that way. Isn't that cool? He's not too impressed, but you know what? <laughs>